What's going on YouTube? Today's video is going to be on my DIY CNC. This is my DIY CNC. As you can see, this is the computer itself. I am using a Mach 3. This is just a demo itself. It's on the mills. This is where I house the electronics. I just put it in a Tupperware and if it gets hot, I just open up the box and let the air out. And if it's really hot, then I'll flip it on its side and blow a fan on it but these are where the driver is the control board is right here this is the power supply and we have some links and i have the x axis is hooked up together they are um pretty much bridged if that's the word you use bridged or <coughs> um together where when the board itself sends out a signal and it goes out and you can see the two wires and but it goes into two different drivers sending it to different motors and of course the power supply just powers everything up and then the usb cord the main 110 outlet this is like a pwm and it runs this motor where this is hooked up to the chuck and it spins it and i will be showing you that <coughs> but that's the electronics itself spliced we're spliced together there we go that's the word i was looking for but if we have everything on the computer it's all hooked up the reason why if you follow me on facebook it took me forever to figure out how to get my the the controller um where mach 3 was reading the controller because it was just a solid it was a blinking red light and it was bad and then now it's actually runs and reads it and I had to look or uh, do some research because before I bought the um, controller and the components I didn't read the fine print it said it didn't work on Windows 10 but there was a uh, updated driver to make sure it works so I got that fixed so <clears throat> let's go talk about the, um, sy the system itself and how I built it so these are the motors of course these are the stepper motors as you can see i have this on my it's actually the y-axis are bridged they're spliced together so the, this is the y y-axis this is the one of them and this is the other one and they're all running on two different two different um drivers but this is the motor mount when i ordered the motor mount in amazon it's um what took so long is not the motor mount coming it's actually having these couplers the Amazon it didn't tell you exactly what size coupler you needed the original couplers I had was way too short and it, it didn't bridge the gap between the ball the ball screw and the motor so that wouldn't work so I had to order that I wish Amazon told me what coupler to buy what length therefore I didn't have to figure that out <coughs> but also if you notice I cut this because I was planning to have the motors the stepper motors mounted on the wood but now the whole system is all independent so nothing is mounted on the wood it's all the ball screws are all mounted on 30 series aluminum extrusions so for me i had to use cut a piece on my miter saw and install this that way it's holding it up for more strength and makes it more stable but this is just my y-axis i have two of them because the way it's running it needs to move this whole system this is where the chuck is and the headstock and the tailstock this is just a NEMA 17 motor and I have this I just had these from old old previous um, points for um, when I was cutting cutting in my lathe so I just use these to hold the wood itself but this one is on 20 series and then this one's on um, the ball screws I use all ball screws so it has minimum minimum play as you can see there's really no play and then the way I mounted it there's minimum play so I'll show you a picture on how I did my original before I even had it on 30 series on the 30 series but <clears throat> if we move to the x-axis the reason why I call this the x-axis is because as I look at it from left to right I call it the x-axis if it's on the lay is technically the z-axis it's the machine itself doesn't 
doesn't know what the axis is. You tell the uh, you tell the machine, the computer, what your axes are. So it's irrelevant if I was using this as a Z axis, which I did before. I didn't like it. It was more confusing because the thing is that's how lays are. But the thing is, it's the Y axis would be this way. This would be your X axis on the lay. It's just more confusing. So I just made this as my X axis, and also this is on the 30 series aluminum extrusions, as you can see. I had to maximize the extrusions. This is the wide as it gets. So I had to build on that and extend it so that <clears throat> all the rails are gonna be true and as straight as possible. And it's not dependent on the wood anymore, like I said. Everything is all independent. So all I did was mount it. This is like a T so that it gets um, no gaps and make sure it's all straight. And course having the same motor mount with the same couplers a ball screw where it goes through these are the rails and then once I get all the way down there I have <clears throat> my old router this is where I make it to cut wood and this is the tailstock itself I bought this on Amazon bought this Amazon as you can see this is the bolt that holds this, this is actually a vacuum, just a regular line, and it collects the dust. So I try to get minimum dust around this area. Biggest thing about having it in this work area, my work, my workspace, Ear Pro, Eye Pro is like a must because it kicks up a lot of wood, wood um, fibers. And also this is loud, the vacuum's loud, and you'll hear, sometimes hear a whining noise. So I'll show you how this one turns. All I have is, um, a manual I'm not ru running it off a computer so this is the button that activates it this is the button that goes um, clockwise kind of clockwise so you turn it off and there it is I run it <coughs> the counterclockwise this is going towards me and then on this rotary knob you can see in this rotary knob right here We'll change the RPM. And then I just stop that. So that's how I um, turn my shafts. And I'll be turning actually cues on this is I'll be ordering another chuck. They call this the fourth axis, but I'm not hooking it up to the computer, but I'll be ordering another <coughs> chuck with a NEMA 23 motor, which is a lot stronger. For so, Even then, this is strong enough where it will turn, it will turn um, the, the blanks and everything, but I just want it where I guarantee it it's a, a lot better holding power, a lot holding, a better holding power with a NEMA 20, because this is a NEMA 23 versus a NEMA 17. So that would be a lot bigger. Once I get that, ordered then I'll have another tailstock where I don't have to worry about moving this because this is already set I calibrated it to make sure that the headstock and tailstock is um, dead centers so I will show you moving <coughs> the y the x axis and you can see how it moves so these I set everything already on my um, my Mach 3 where I adjust the different speeds on the different motors for different axes. So for this one, this is all on the jog rate. I'm going to increasing the jog rate no more than 50 to um, 60%. So now you can see that I will be moving left, right. So the reason why I have it this way, this is my X axis and it is moving as it moves left. It's actually moving on the negative direction. Everything is when I'm working is on the negative direction. So meaning when it moves left, it is going negative. And when I move this on the Y axis, as it moves away from the cutter, because you have to cut away from the cutter because if you get a taper, you want the taper going this way, like on a shaft or even on a, the cue butt itself. So it moves away. This has to move away from the cutter. So this is also on the negative. So making everything on the negative was a lot easier when I have to do the programming, the writing of the G codes, 
everything is on the negative i don't have to do the x-axis on this negative and the y-axis is on the positive it just makes everything confusing i could put it all in one line <clears throat> so moving the x-axis let me go more in depth on how the x-axis looks if you look in the back of the x-axis this way you'll see i have a steel plate because everything here is pretty much aluminum except these rails and of course the balls the ball screw itself but this is where i actually mount my um caliper well not calipers my dial indicators that way i can measure the runouts on the the truck itself and how straight how straight my rails are because that's very important and there's a reason why i don't want to move the tailstock because i already adjusted that and i don't want to keep adjusting it when i have to remove it put it on and on because i have to do different distance because a wood a wood blank is about 18 inches and i don't want to move it to 18 inches and then move it back to 31 inches and so forth so 30 inches so that's one of the things why i want to order another headstock um fourth axis that way i get another tail stock and i can do that independently so but this is where i would mount my dial indicator i also added the calipers here would hold it with the um, magnetic arm and it measures and it totally it tells it how many inches it moves so that's that's the thing biggest thing is calibrating 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 is probably the most key thing in making everything true on on your machine because when you tell this machine to move the x-axis to move one inch it needs to move exactly one inch if you tell it to move two inches it needs to move exactly two inches that's the biggest thing is having it calibrated having it true and if you tell the y-axis because the y-axis when making a shaft it rarely moves you can barely see the the, um, the ball screws move but all i do is indicate make sure the couplers are moving and you can see how if you bring it to a scan out you'll see both of my um y-axis move so and that's how they will be moving and even the wires are loose before i had them all stapled but <clears throat> this time they're all independent which i like that way everything is based off the aluminum extraction itself so that's my y-axis going positive going towards the cutter going away from the cutter is negative i had it the other way around or this was x-axis this was the z-axis like how a lay is and because this is technically like a lay setup i didn't like it because i was using the mock the mock 3 lay i didn't like it i like the mock 3 mil because i couldn't do my adjustments a lot easier yes you can do canned where it automatically cuts to a certain diameter when you're cutting cylinders but i have to learn that program and learn how to write, write that g-code the way i write my g-code is pretty simple is once i get everything set up so i'll move my x-axis <clears throat> or you can i just easiest way to do it if we go here to the computer so i don't have to hold down the buttons is one 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 thing i love is when you go go to zero you'll see everything move and it's hands off it goes to my original spot where i wanted it to be and that's my zeros and then of course i'll bring my y-axis as you here is a cylinder of just a hard maple I'll be turning to a shaft later. All I do is put this, make sure they're on centers. Watch out, let me see. There we go. And I got my little anna wrenches here. They don't have to be super tight. That's one thing about it when you're turning wood. And then just have these tight so that this doesn't back off. So and this has little notches and you'll see how the wood will turn so this has a little wobble as we turn it with the router itself it will take that wobble out and one thing about the router that is also independent i'm not i gotta turn it on and off 
with the switch and the best thing is once I set up my my um my program is I have it on where I load the G code itself and I have it named the shaft taper because all I'm doing is shafts for now and then I'll be making the butts later and I have small movements the small movement is probably the most important to me because this just this small movement you can see this is this is how I wrote it um, G54 G20 the feed rates at 10 G90 absolute G1 going and Y at the positive 0 0.007 that's what my last one I had and then of course we turn back to start so what that means pretty much is it's telling I'm telling my Y axis to move at 0 0.007 biggest thing is on anything with a lay you always cut on both sides you're not cutting one side it's not like a mill a technically a mill a lay is a mill they say it's a a lay is a mill on its on its side well technically that's pretty much what it is but you're cutting both sides meaning the total diameter of one I cut will be 0 0.014 because that's how your total that's how you get your measurements so while I'll, I'll do everything everything is on on um, standard American um, what they call it. it's not metric so it's on inches there we go it's like inches imperial imperial mode there we go so I don't have everything on metric because everything I could I see everything on standard which which in the Q world it doesn't make sense to me because everything is on standard but when we go to tip mil tip diameter it's in millimeters which I don't understand it but we all know five five twelve five five twelve five thirteen is a 13 millimeters but that's like one of the weirdest things that boggles my mind not to ch change my calipers and change my settings because I have to measure because when I'm making a shaft what the tip diameter is will be in millimeters and then but I have to cut it in an imperial and I have to change everything to imperial that way everything is imperial because it's more accurate for me running on imperial on inches that way I get that true cut and it, one thing I like about CNC it's very repeatable like once I put in my shaft um, load my g-code on the shafts and I hit it once I set my my layup it's repeatable the, everything is repeatable the, um, the shaft diameter and the end is always gonna be the same and then as I set it to different diameters in front it, it cuts it cuts it smaller and all I gotta do is adjust the final exit point on my on my program where I adjust that where the CNC will actually back off more so that it gives it that taper and I always get the same size of what I want if I want it normally I'll cut it to 860 so that way once I cut it I can I can um, just sand it down and give it that final that final um, the final taper I want so normally I'll cut it to 860 because this is also on 30 so normally it'd be 850 like if I get an inch off here depending on what I want if I want an inch if I want a longer pro taper in the front I'll cut it on the back I won't cut the back side I'll cut um, I'll cut the back side and leave the front side on if I want a a stronger taper then I will leave I will cut the front side and having this uh, a stronger taper in the back so I hope that makes sense so if I want something stronger on the taper itself where it flares out here I'll cut the front to make it 29 and if I want a longer taper on the uh, pro taper on the front side I'll cut the back side that way it'll, it'll be shorter on the taper on um, the flare but a longer pro taper but this is how I made my CNC everything is on aluminum extrusion everything's all independent like I said this is my Y axis A axis that's all independent it's on the router I don't have it plugged up and of course I don't have the vacuum plugged up because it gets really loud if you follow me on Facebook and you can see and how loud it is so everything my dust collection and it runs out so and how I run my little program and this is what I do when I move when I cut my shafts and hopefully hopefully this video was informative 
And if you haven't already, hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, and leave a comment down below. Thank you for watching, and see you next time. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe me. Don't forget the thumbs up. Bye bye. This itself is going to be the CNC um, setup. No.